everyone welcome back to biophilia your all time study mate so if you appreciate the hard work and efforts put into each and every video do like share and subscribe to our amazing channel as a good habit biophilia ensures that you have a brief look at the previous points for the perfections in the next advice the part one of this chapter that was about air pollution just as a friendly advice if you feel to revise or go through these points in details do not hesitate to click on the link given below in the description box down below so go through the previous part for better understanding for now let's cover the previous part in short so we started with air pollution we saw about the causes of air pollutions the types of pollutants the methods how we could control air pollution the air act of 1981 noise pollution the case study about delhi and acid rain as well as smog so this was the key highlights about the previous topic that we had covered in the part 1 of this chapter so if you do not remember any one of those topics or you need a slightly help on those topics you can surely go and check out the previous part given in the description box now what do you understand from these pictures there is something common between all those pictures that is nothing but our today's topic that is water pollution so now let's discuss about this in detail now with the rising water pollution the government of india had woken up and passed a water act now your water act that was the water prevention and control of pollution act passed in 1974 that was all about having one objective or one main motive that was to safeguard our water bodies water bodies ko save karna was the major objective and even to maintain and restore the wholesomeness of the water so along with prevention control you also need to restore so jo polluted water bodies hai you need to clean those part as well and even stop the further pollution so that was the major objective of the water act of 1974 Now what are going to be the water pollutants jiski wajah se ye pani itna ganda ho raha hai now water pollutants are going to cause water to degrade which is going to be unfit for human consumption so even of a smallest quantity that is impurities agar 0.1% bhi ho jati hai that is going to give rise to the impure water so 99.9% pani mein agar 0. 1% परसेंट भी इम्योरिटीज है देन इट इज गोइंग टू पोल्यूट द एंटायर वॉटर अब ये जीरो पॉइंट वन परसेंट इम्प्योरिटीज क्या क्या हो सकती है दैट कैन बी सस्पेंडेड सॉलिड लाइक सैंड क्ले स्टिल वॉट एवर नियर बाय द वॉटर बॉडीज दैट इज प्रेजेंट दैट कैन बी द पोल्यूटेंट कॉजेज देर कैन बी कोलॉइडल मटीरियल लाइक द फीटल मैटर बैक्टेरिया सम पीपल हैव हैबिट इन रूरल एरियाज टू वॉश क्लोथ्स इन टू द वॉटर बॉडीज so wo cloth ke pieces or those uh, like small fibers or the paper fibers from the paper industry all those can get gathered into the water bodies ya fir dissolved materials in case of nutrients so jo agriculture farm se jo pani beh kar surrounding water bodies mein pahunch chuka hai with those fertilizers and all those pesticides all those are going to get dissolved and pollute the water so water pollutants jo hote hain it is going to involve the first that is the domestic sewage so domestic sewage is going to be the most common source of water pollution so 0.1% impurities hone pe bhi the domestic sewage ka agar 0.1% bhi water bodies mein jata hai it is going to be unfit for human consumption now what are these domestic sewage or the waste products it can involve biodegradable pollutants jaise fecal matter animal waste organic compounds all those that we saw here in the picture that can make it unfit for human use second ho sakta hai the industrial effluent 
industrial effluent can have toxic substances they can have heavy metals uh, heavy metals to hote hai they are understood as having metals density higher than 5 grams per cubic centimeter so this is a very important and can be asked in mcqs so heavy metals kon kon se hote hai they can be mercury can be calcium it can be copper cadmium or even lead so these are going to be the heavy metals which can cause the water pollution next is going to be the insecticides and the pesticides so ye insects or pesticides jo spray hote hain in the agriculture land they are going to seep down from the irrigation water and reach to the nearest water body जब ये वाटर बॉडीज में पहुंच जाते हैं दैट इज फ्रॉम द फ्लो फ्रॉम द फील्ड दे आर गोइंग टू अफेक्ट द एक्वेटिक लाइफ एंड आल्सो द अदर एनिमल्स व्हिच आर गोइंग टू ड्रिंक वाटर फ्रॉम दैट वाटर बॉडी नाउ वंस दैट इज स्टार्टिंग टू अफेक्ट द एक्वेटिक लाइफ इकोलॉजिकल इंबैलेंस हैज बीन स्टार्टेड नेक्स्ट इज गोइंग टू बी द डिटर्जेंट्स एंड द फर्टिलाइजर्स सो डिटर्जेंट्स जिन लोगों को आदत है इन द रूरल एरियाज टू वॉश क्लोथ्स इन टू द वॉटर बॉडीज द डिटर्जेंट और द सोपी वॉटर इज गोइंग टू गो इन टू द वॉटर एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म अ फ्लेम एंड दिस फ्लेम इज गोइंग टू गेट गैदर्ड ओवर द ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट जो डोमेस्टिक सीवेज से आ रहा है एंड बिकॉज इट इज फॉर्मिंग अ फ्लेम अ प्रोटेक्टिव कवरिंग उसकी वजह से देर कैन नॉट बी एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ बायो लॉजिकल डिग्रेडेशन डिकम्पोजिशन नहीं हो सकता है एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट रीजन द ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट कैन नॉट बी रिड्यूस्ड सो मेजर इम्पॉर्टेंट सोर्स ऑफ दिस पोल्यूशन कैन बी फॉस्फेट पोल्यूशन सो फॉस्फेट पोल्यूशन ज्यादातर मिलता है इन टू द वॉटर बॉडीज नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट वन ऑफ द मेजर इम्पॉर्टेंट पिलर टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द वॉटर पोल्यूशन सो वॉटर पोल्यूशन को समझने के लिए वी नीड द हेल्प ऑफ बायोकेमिकल ऑक्सीजन डिमांड दैट इज बी ओ डी नाउ बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग बी ओ डी यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड सम कॉन्सेप्ट अबाउट डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन सो डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन जिसको डी ओ के बी प्रेजेंटेशन में यू राइट इट then what are the factors to determine the amount of dissolved oxygen so it depends upon the oxygen consumption by the organisms it also depends on the decomposition rate so agar decomposition zyada hai that means organic life is more then the oxygen consumption is going to increase so there is a relationship that is organic matter that is biodegradable matter agar increase hota hai in the water body the rate of decomposition is going to increase and with the rate of decomposition increased organic life or the microbes are going to increase microbes increase honge unko zyada oxygen chahiye that is oxygen consumption is going to increase when that thing happens the dissolved oxygen is going to decrease the dissolved oxygen is decreasing that means there is a threat to the aquatic life now the main role of biochemical oxygen demand comes now what is this bod that we have been discussing it is nothing but a measure of oxygen required now oxygen kisko required hai for the aerobic decomposers so the microbes hai into the water bodies which are going to undergo uh, degradation for the organic materials they need the oxygen or jitna oxygen quantity they need that measure is going to give you bod now ye bod ka number pata karke what is the help that we are going to get so the help is going to be we can estimate the amount of biodegradable organic matter so biodegradable amount of organic matter if it is more what is going to happen 
ऑर्गेनिक मैटर अगर जाता है दैट मीन्स द डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन इज लेस डिजोल्व ऑक्सीजन अगर कम होता है दैट मीन्स देर इज गोइंग टू बी एक्स्ट्रा ऑक्सीजन सप्लाई नीडेड और जो ऑक्सीजन सप्लाई नीडेड होगा दैट वी कैन कैलकुलेट एंड टू गेट द बी ओ डी so our relation gets completed over here that whenever the organic matter increases yani pollution in the water of biodegradable substances increases there is going to be decrease in dissolved oxygen dissolved oxygen jab kam hoga the biological oxygen demand is going to increase so that brings us to a inverse proportion ki agar dissolved oxygen kam hai the biological oxygen demand is going to increase so for this you can go through this ncert chart ki jab sewage discharge hua into the water body the blue line the blue curve that is representing the biological oxygen demand is going to increase biological oxygen demand agar increase hogi the dissolved oxygen that is represented by the pink line is going to decrease and when the time passes by what is going to happen dissolved oxygen hoga increase and oxygen demand decreases but in this case what is going to happen when the case of sewage is discharged the fishes are going to get killed because of clean water has been disappeared and the dissolved oxygen has been reduced and once the dissolved oxygen again gets increased the fishes are coming back into the clean water so that was a important chart that comes in examination to label out ki kaun sa curve is dissolved oxygen and which curve is for bod so according to the bod values how can you estimate the pollution levels so for example if the bod that is represented in mg per liter so if it is less than 1500 it is a low pollution area 1500 se 4000 ki range mein it is medium and more than 4000 it is a high pollution red zone so a very important thing that whenever the water is having dissolved oxygen content below 8 mg per liter that means it is polluted and heavily polluted water ka dissolved oxygen is below 4 mg per liter so this is a very important point that you need to remember with the reference to mcqs ki 8 mg per liter say water is considered polluted and below 4 it is highly or heavily polluted water so this was all about the bod pillar of water pollution next is about algal bloom what is algal bloom algal bloom you must have seen in the water areas which are stagnant so there is going to be presence of large amount of materials in the water which are going to cause excessive growth of phycoplankton there are going to be free floating algae jinka excessive growth ho jayega that it is going to cover the entire water body and make it appear green now whenever this algal blooms are occurring into the stagnant water bodies mainly there is going to be deterioration of the water quality and because of deterioration of water quality dissolved oxygen kam ho jata hai all that oxygen has been sucked up by the algae because of which the aquatic life that is the fish are going to suffer mortality now there are some algal blooms which are mycocystis which are going to be extremely toxic and if these traces are found in the water the human beings and animals can get toxified so that is a very harmful growth that is occurring in the stagnant waters so it is told to avoid stagnant waters now here are two more pictures that just appeared that is the picture of this flower and the 
the water body which is having a lot of flowers and you can't even see that below these plants there is water so can you guess what this flower is about yes it is about water hyacinth water hyacinth or jiska scientific name hota hai icornia crepisis it is going to be a very beautiful mauve colored flowers और ये फ्लावर्स दिखने में बहुत अच्छे दिखते हैं एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द रीजन दैट दे लुक सो प्रिटी दे वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड टू इंडिया सो जब ब्रिटिशर्स थे दे ब्रॉट दीज ब्यूटिफुल कलर्ड फ्लावर्स विच आर फाउंड ऑन द फ्लोटिंग प्लांट्स टू इंडिया एंड वंस दे गॉट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड वॉट हैपन दे हैड द एबिलिटी टू ग्रो सो फास्टर देन द एबिलिटी टू रिमूव दैम वो इतने जल्दी उगते थे कि कोई लोगों को भेजा गया टू कट देम डाउन बट टिल द टाइम दे यूज टू कट अबाउट फ्यू मीटर्स फ्यू मीटर्स मोर हैड बीन एक्सपांडेड एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ग्रोथ फास्ट ग्रोथ दे हैड कॉस्ड ब्लॉक्स इन टू द वॉटर बॉडीज वो इतने तेजी से ग्रो होते हैं दैट यू कैन नॉट इवन इमेजिन दैट द वॉटर हैज बीन बिलो दिस सरफेस so because of that reason there was a very big imbalance into the ecosystem dynamics and that was when the terror of bengal had come this was introduced in, in bengal and bengal ke water bodies mein there was a lot of imbalance because of which this plant water hyacinth is also called as terror of bengal so this is a very important mcq that who is called the terror of bengal so it is nothing but water hyacinth second reason can be what was the Uh, need to bring this water hyacinth or what was the quality that it got introduced so it was its beautiful flowers and the shape of leaves so wo itne khoobsurat dikhte the that people brought it to india and got them introduced but who knew that they can grow so wildly that it is going to cause trouble into the water bodies so that was about algal bloom and the terror of bengal now let's move about the second most important topic that is biological magnification biological magnification ek aisa phenomenon hai wherein there are certain pollutants these certain pollutants are going to get accumulated in the tissues and once they get accumulated in the tissues they are going to increase in concentrations along the food chain तो जब एक के बाद एक के बाद ऑर्गेनिजम्स एक दूसरे को खाएंगे दीज आर गोइंग टू गेट ट्रांसफर्ड बिकॉज दे आर अक्यूमुलेटेड दे आर स्टोर्ड इन द टिश्यूज जब स्मॉल से फॉर एग्जांपल रैबिट इज ईटिंग द ग्रास सो ग्रास से रैबिट में गया रैबिट से यो सम अदर कार्निवोर हैड ईट इन दैट रैबिट सो फ्रॉम दैट रैबिट द मीट हैज बिन ट्रांसफर्ड to the larger carnivore so by that food chain this certain pollutants are going to get through the food chain and because of the greater demands of the higher animals concentration is going to increase say for example eagles or the hawks they are going to have major effect on to the accumulation because they have been sitting on the top of the food chain Now what happens? Food chain में ऊपर जैसे जाते हो what is going to happen? The number of species sitting on to the top are going to be less. And once they are sitting on the top, that means they are more superior, more powerful. They need more energy. More energy means they will have a good diet. And good diet brings them that they are going to feed on huge quantities. So ऐसे तो है नहीं कि टाइगर ने सिर्फ एक ही डियर खाया. No, it is going to eat lot many deers in its lifetime. and deer is going to feed on large amount of plants so from that plant say deer many deers to the lion it is going to increase in the accumulation so you can see in the photograph over here ki pani mein concentration kitna kam tha it was in parts per million parts per millions say decimals reduce okay zycoplankton mein 
it has increased small fish tuck again it is 0.5 ppm large fish meal it has been 2 ppm until the top of the food chain it has become 25 ppm so that increase is going to get suffering for the top of the food chain now top of the food chain may for example agar birds hai so the birds are going to suffer from thinning of eggshells eggshells agar thin ho jayenge there is going to be premature breaking or hatching of the eggs and if there is premature hatching there is going to be decline in the bird population bird population may decline hone ki wajah se the whole ecological food chain is going to be affected now let's understand about eutrophication eutrophication kya hota hai it is the excessive growth of algae plants and animals in the water bodies aur ye kyun utna excessive growth hai because unke paas bahut sara nutrient available hai if you are given a big plate of food with unlimited quantities definitely you are going to have a better feed you have better growth and you will have a better growth in your life so that same thing is happening ye plants ko jo chahiye wo sab diya ja raha hai through the nutrient enrichment particularly nitrogen and phosphorus jo plants ko bahut chahiye for their growth and when this is provided in excess of quantities wo fatafat reproduce karke apni colony badhayenge and once these colonies excessively grow take place into the water bodies that brings us to the eutrophication now there can be sources of natural eutrophication so natural eutrophication ke points aise hote hain that it is going to be the natural aging of water bodies natural aging in sense the water bodies are going to undergo some changes which are going to be very slow processes it will take centuries to undergo this natural eutrophication the young water body jo freshly water body form hui hai it is going to be cold clear and no nutrients now once the rain starts coming though it is going to seep into the ground ग्राउंड वाटर बनेगा इट विल मूव इन टू द स्ट्रीम्स एंड एड द न्यूट्रियस जब एड न्यूट्रियस होंगे इट इज गोइंग टू टेक लॉट ऑफ टाइम टू ब्रिंग सो मच न्यूट्रियस दैट इज नाइट्रोजन एंड फॉस्फरस सो दैट देर इज ग्रोथ ऑफ एक्वेटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स एक्वेटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स की जब ग्रोथ होगी ओवर द सेंचुरीज देन द लेक विल स्टार्ट टू ग्रो शैलोअर warmer and with warmer water there are going to be larger scope of organisms to live into it now in the photo as well you can see ki agar ye new water body hai uski depth jo hogi that is going to be more but if you see for the old water body the depth has been decreased depth decrease hui hai but that is taking the time of centuries but because of human activities interrupting into the natural processes that has taken place for the cultured or the accelerated eutrophication cultured or accelerated eutrophication is nothing but because of human activities human activities that means jo sare nutrients from the homes the factories fertilizers jo agriculture farms se beh beh ke sare water bodies mein ja rahe hain because of these nutrients that are coming at a faster rate there is over stimulation of the growth itni fast growth ho rahi hai and because of that fast growth of algae there is coming of scum wo itne populated densely populated hai ki wo scum ban jate hai there is unpleasant odors because that is going to rob all those dissolved oxygen aquatic life mar jayegi niche and all that is going to poison the whole population of the fish aquatic life to gai because all that oxygen has been taken over by the growth of algae finally kya hoga there is going to be choking of the lake to death oxygen agar bacha hi nahi into the water as dissolved state 
then no organisms are going to live into that particular lake that is going to cause disturbances in the nature so cultured eutrophication is going to occur at a very fast rate it can take decades 10 20 years may the depth of the lake can go from deep to shallow and whereas in natural processes it will take centuries to happen but because of human activity it is taking just few years to undergo this process now let's see about the thermal pollution thermal pollution jo hota hai, that is because of hot water and hot water is a notable pollutant that is coming out from the industries now we hot water industries se kab aata hai? the industries like the power plants making up power from oil refineries all those type of factories or industries are using water as a coolant the machine bought there the calm karti hai it needs some coolant to reduce the heat so water is the very cheapest source and easily available source so water is used as coolant to cool down the machinery and increase the efficiency but they forget that when this water has been warmed up because of serving as a coolant this hot water is released into the nearest water body and when we release karte hai, the water temperature has been already increased by 8 to 10 degrees celsius 8 to 10 degrees celsius jada garam pani agar water bodies mein chhodoge there are going to be problems because it is not natural for the water body to have such higher temperature so it can have problems like it is reducing or completely eliminating the organisms which are sensitive to high temperature jo organisms ko garam pani mein rehne ki aadat nahi hai they can die and again imbalance in that water body in some places there can be growth of plants and fishes which were in extreme cold areas wo itne thande pani mein the the water was cold previously but still they had some spores or some places wherein the plants can grow ab jab pani ka temperature garam hone laga hai now these plants and fishes which were freezed into that cold areas now they can grow and it can also damage to the indigenous flora and fauna har jagah ki ek apni importance hoti hai that what sort of plants and animals it is carrying in its area so that can create a damage to the indigenous flora and fauna now is a case study regarding the integrated wastewater treatment so wastewater treatment ke liye there were few examples the practical examples which we are going to discuss so the first example is foam the long form of it is friends of Arctica marsh now this Arctica is going to be a small town along the northern coast of California. Again, this is going to be a very important MCQ that is northern coast of California. Now here the small town hai, uske andar jo log the, they were very keen to work with the biologists of Humboldt State University. Unki jo state university thi, unke saath they cooperated and they worked to create an integrated wastewater treatment process. Now, the wastewater treatment process jo hai, it was a very importantly a natural system. They did not go for artificial or man-made system. It was a natural system that was developed. So this natural system also helped ki jo unke paas marsh tha, they could host to have a century and a high level of biodiversity because of this natural system and because of natural system they are not harming the nature the fishes animals and birds are also being developed into this particular area so what this case study is about that the people went through the cleaning process in two stages the first was the conventional sedimentation yani pani ko rakha gaya to get slowed down and the sedimentation process to occur 
सेडिमेंटेशन जब हो गया सारे हेवी पार्टिकल्स केम डाउन एंड सेटल्ड ऑन टू द फ्लोर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया देन देर वॉज फिल्ट्रेशन देन फिल्ट्रेशन से जो बिग पार्टिकल्स प्लास्टिक्स एंड ऑल दो स्टफ गॉट ब्लॉक्ट अप देन द क्लोरिन ट्रीटमेंट वॉज प्रोसीडेड नाउ इन दिस ट्रीटमेंट दैट वॉज द the physical areas they could not eliminate the dangerous pollutants now dangerous pollutants which were dissolved like heavy metals were still remaining into that water now for removing that heavy metals and the dangerous pollutants they had developed a series of six connected marshes now it six collected marshes who were spreaded over 60 hectares of marshland so 60 hectares is not a small land it is a very huge area which was utilized to have a natural way of waste water treatment so yes six marshes jo the over 60 hectares of marshland they had many sorts of plants algae fungi bacteria which were specifically selected for major reasons that was to neutralize so agar acidic water aa raha hai ya basic aa raha hai to make it neutral and absorb and assimilate the pollutants because these materials can be used by few particular specific microbes and in that way they can be eliminated from the water bodies so because of the noble concern of the citizens of that particular area now they have a natural method of waste water treatment as well as they have a very beautiful tourist spot with a sanctuary so that was one of the case study case study is about eco sanitation so eco sanitation was a sustainable system that was used for handling human excreta so human excreta ko handle karna was a very important job because human excreta in small quantities also can affect the water bodies in larger quantities so for that reason they were using dry composting toilets wherein they were recycling human excreta to convert it into natural fertilizers now this idea was a very practical hygienic as well as efficient and very important people loved that is it is cost effective solution now when all those good qualities are there the toilets are called as eco sand toilets and you can find these toilets which are in working conditions in parts of kerala and sri lanka so in this the human excreta is not going to go and flow into the water bodies rather it will be collected in dry bins the pus ko composting kiya jayega and a natural fertilizer would be generated so that was about the second case study and we also complete our second part about water pollution so if you like our video do not forget to like share and subscribe to our channel till the next part of the chapter comes stay smiling keep studying hard meet you in the next video till then thank you